Dan, thank you so much. What makes ISIS such a threat, national security experts say, is not its willingness to be more barbaric than other terrorist groups, but rather two things. One, it's Western members, Americans and Europeans, who might be able to return home undetected. And second, it's vast wealth. ISIS is, to experts say, the richest terrorist group in the history of the world. They are even contemplating, they claim, creating their own currency. ISIS announced on social media that it wants to mint its own gold, silver, and copper coins. They say doing so would free them of any ties to the, quote, tyrant's financial system, a reference to Western money, especially the U.S. dollar. But that's not all they might have in mind. And joining me now is Jimmy Grulet. He's the former undersecretary of the U.S. Treasury Department. He just testified before members of Congress about stopping the flow of cash into ISIS. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. Explain for us how this group has been able to make so much money. Well, unlike its, uh, its predecessor, Al-Qaeda, which raised money principally from external sources, uh, ISIS, donations from donations, Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Qatar. Arabia, charities, for example. Yeah. Uh, ISIS is principally, primarily self-funded, and the largest stream of funding coming to ISIS is through the illicit sale of oil in territories in Iraq and Syria that contain oil wells and oil refineries that ISIS controls. The estimates are that they bring in as much as one to two million dollars a day from the sale of oil in the black market. And what are their other sources of funding? Uh, in addition, uh, they have raised as much as $20 million from uh, ransom hostage payments. They also raise money from extortionate payments and taxes that they impose on the people in the territories that they control, the businesses in the territories they control, and then finally on the sale of uh, ancient artifacts that have been stolen from uh, Iraq and Syria. So I, I thought that there was some question about funding coming from Qatar and other countries. Th there is, there is. There is some, some external funding, but their primary sources of funding are, are internal. Is there a way for the U.S. to stop these funding sources? I know the U.S., uh, the, the, the coalition has tried to target some of these portable oil and gas refineries. Um, but what about, for instance, the people who, who buy uh, the, this uh, illicitly obtained uh, oil and gas. No, exactly, exactly. The uh, Treasury Department needs to be focusing on the middlemen, the smugglers, the people that are actually transporting as much as 20,000 to 30,000 barrels of oil a day across the border into, into Turkey and then also into Syria. They're not targeting them? Well, they, they haven't identified any uh, individual. At least they haven't placed them on the Treasury list for blocking and freezing the assets of the middlemen of the smugglers, of um, you know, corrupt uh, border guards at the border that are looking the other way when the oil is being smuggled across the border into Turkey. And I think that the Treasury Department needs to intensify its efforts on those types of individuals. It would seem obvious that you need to go after those guys in order to stop this trade. Well, I think it is. But my sense is that the Treasury Department has uh, had some difficulty in, in developing some traction, in, in establishing its footing, and focusing and identifying those individuals. What do you make of this uh, ISIS plan to create its own currency? Is that something that could really actually happen? Well, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, right now, the estimates are that they have as much as a million to $2 billion in reserve. I mean, this is the wealthiest terrorist organization that the world has ever known. And so with that kind of money, you know, it's hard to, to uh, understand uh, you know, what's the potential. What could they do with that? So certainly it's a possibility. But I think the difficulty, of course, with that kind of money is, is you can't just put that, that, that money in shoeboxes and, and place it under your mattress. It has to enter into the financial system at some point in time. So I think the Treasury needs to be focusing on banks, banks in Qatar, for example, and in Kuwait that may be the recipients in handling uh, money for ISIS. They have so much money, you say, and yet the current Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, David Cohen, says they don't have enough money to actually uh, run a country or set up the, the so-called caliphate that they want to. Do you agree with that? Well, I'm not so sure. I think they have, uh, again, uh, uh, the estimates are as much as a billion dollars in reserve that's in their possession. And so certainly some of that money has to go back into humanitarian activities, uh, for the, the people and the populations that they control. But they certainly have ample funds to finance their, their terrorist operations, to kill innocent civilians, to orchestrate and plan and implement terrorist attacks. So they, they shouldn't be taken lightly. All right, Jimmy Grillet.